Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having us tonight. My name is Chrissy Russell. I'm a business teacher at Persippany High School. I'm here with Liz O'Boyle, who is also a business teacher at Persippany Hills High School. We are really excited to be here tonight to talk to all of you about the senior internship program, which we started implementing two years ago as a pilot program. So two years ago during that pilot, we were able to offer 25 students on each side of town the opportunity to intern during the last five weeks of their senior year. And we had such a great response and great results, we were actually able to put that program into effect last year. So last year we had 50 students from both sides of town, 100 students in total, participate in a five week internship program at the end of their senior year. So some of the things we'd just like to go over with you all tonight, we wanna talk about the reasons why we were um, so interested in bringing this program to our students in Persephone. We'll give you an overview of how the program works. We'll talk about how students apply to the program, how they earn credit. We'll highlight some of our um, internship partners. And then Liz and I just wanna share um, a story about each, ab about a student from each of our schools that had a great success story. We feel like we could go on and on and tell you tons of stories about all of the amazing things that our students did, but we figured um, we'd keep it short for today. Okay, and just to give you a little background, um, Chrissy and I attended a business educators workshop years ago where there was a business teacher there pitching this program that she implemented in her high school. And um, Chrissy and I were kind of sitting across the table at each other and our eyes were just lighting up because we thought it was such an amazing program and would be a great addition to Parsippany. Um, and the teacher went on to explain how she started the pilot year with just a few students and um, eventually a few years later had almost the entire senior class participating in the program. So um, we were so excited about it and we came back and um, it luckily aligned with our district goals to um, get real world, uh, get our students more real world experience and Dr. Mulrooney and um, Kelly Curtis and Rachel um, we're all behind us and we were able to put together this awesome program so in addition to um, I don't have my glasses on <laughs> I'm so far away um, in addition to the obvious benefits of career exploration uh, Chrissy and I both stress to the students how important growing their network is even at the young age of 17 and 18. We've all heard your network is your net worth. So um, the students have really embraced their relationships with their mentors and coworkers and we've had some amazing success stories of students being offered paid summer jobs, um, promises for internships when they return from college, um, I even have one student who is interning at an accounting firm and he had them, uh, they were sending him virtual work. So we had like a little side gig while he was in college to earn some extra money. So they've really learned the, um, the importance of this, building this network, um, building their skills. And then also, um, you know, at the age of 17 and 18, it gives them an opportunity to kind of open up their schedule, um, be responsible so they don't have to be at school at 7.30 and leave at 2.30. They have to um, kind of show their um, accountability and maturity and responsibility of setting their schedule and doing what needs to be done uh, at their internship. So I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of how the program works. So once seniors apply and are accepted to the program, um, and as I said, there will be 50 this year from the high and 50 uh, from the hills, they are required to spend a minimum of 80 total hours at their internship site during the last five weeks of the school year. So our senior internship program starts once AP exams are done. 
So once kids are ready to start their internship, they do not come to school anymore. Their school responsibilities and being in class and doing homework and keeping up with assignments are done. They don't take final exams. 100% of their responsibility is to be at their internship, to learn as much as they can and take away as much as they can from that opportunity. So in terms of managing the program, that's where Liz and I come in. So this is something that we work on year round. So once September starts, we meet together um, multiple times per week to figure out how best to run the program and how best to implement it. So we have been meeting for the past couple weeks to start gearing up for this year's program. Tweaking things that could have run better that uh, this past year, improving processes to make sure that when it, uh, this, that when it comes time this year to implement, implement the program, everything will run smoothly. Um, as far as eligibility goes, uh, when we sat down to create the program along with um, Dr. Mulrooney and Kelly Curtis and Rachel, we wanted to make sure that the, um, this program is available to all students, um, not just maybe the advanced or high achieving students. So there's not a minimum GPA. The students just have to be in good academic standing, not in, um, uh, not failing or potentially failing any classes. Um, a positive behavior record along with uh, positive attendance. So hopefully that, that's most of the senior class. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so um, our next big push is to get into senior English classes mid-October. So we visit all of the senior inter or, excuse me, all of the senior English classes and we explain the internship program um, to all of our students and we talk to them about the application process. The application is a Google form where we require students to respond in essay form to a number of questions and we also ask them to upload a recent resume so that we can view um, that resume. Our internship application opens in mid-November and we chose that timing because when seniors are applying early decision and early action, they're really doing it in the beginning of the year. So we chose a time that hopefully they are done with all of that and this is not an added stress to them. They can get this done and they can easily apply to um, the program itself. Once that application process um, closes, Liz and I have uh, meetings with all of the students. We set up workshops. Those workshops cover a variety of topics from resume writing to interview skills to networking to how to actually find um, an internship. So ultimately, it is the responsibility of the student to find and secure an internship. However, part of what Liz and I do and, and part of why we love this position so much both of us come from outside of education in the corporate world. So I feel like we're going back you know, 20 years and we're really getting to use our networking skills. So we're reaching out to former colleagues. We are cold calling local businesses. We are asking our colleagues for contact. We are dropping off informational folders in person to businesses that we drive by. So one of the things that we're really proud of and that we're really excited about is we were able to come up with 50 different internship opportunities for our students last year. So in addition to the ones that they were finding on their own, we created a database of 50 opportunities. We had more opportunities than the kids even needed, which was exciting. And you know, it's something I should have mentioned too with the application process. Um, we have 50 open spots at the high this year, 50 open spots at the hills. We had almost 200 students apply for the program last year, and I have a feeling that we'll have even more between the two schools this year. We have already been getting emails from parents, kids stopping by during unit lunch and asking, so there is definitely a buzz, and there is definitely an excitement about it as well. Um, okay, so how do the students earn credit? This internship is a one quarter credit pass fail class. So um, they are responsible for completing weekly assignments, um, not too in depth, but we ask them to kind of review their week. What have they learned? What tasks have they completed? 
what could they have done better, what are some goals you have for next week, um, and then part of their grade is also Chrissy and I going to visit them on site and we evaluate them and ask the mentor to evaluate them as well. Um, and what we noticed is this is certainly not the internships of the old days where it was making photocopies and filing and things like that. We've gone into these businesses and our students are working in labs, um, chemical labs, computer labs, engineering labs. We had a student um, with the Boot and PD on ride-alongs and reviewing uh, body cam footage. We had uh, a couple students at Caggiano making retainers and um, I could go on and on. We had a wonderful student working at Littleton in the ABA room and now she wants to go to college and uh, study ABA therapy. So these internships were really impactful learning experiences for our students. Um, so the observation was, is part of their grade. I should mention um, the mentor also um, completes an evaluation and we've asked the mentor to not only submit that um, evaluation to us, but to have a, a meeting with the student. Sit down with the student and go over the evaluation. What have they done well? What kind of things could they improve upon? Um, which is that big learning piece. And some of it we've heard several times over and over is communication skills with our students, time management. So those are things that Chrissy and I are working into um, kind of the pre-program before we send them out. We're, we're going over some of those soft skills that they really need to master. Um, and then, yeah, so as soon as, as they, um, as long as they complete that 80 hours and they do the other things successfully, they'll earn the one quarter credit for the program. So this is very hard to read, but I do want to mention that it is, it is actually very impressive when you see it up close. And what you'll notice is that there are companies from all different industries. And one thing that we're very proud of is a number of the companies that are on our list from this past year are a result of a prior relationship during our pilot program. So we've worked with them before. So one of our goals personally is to not only build these partnerships and relationships with these organizations, but to really grow those partnerships and relationships so that we can continue to offer more opportunities for our students. So I'd just like to take a quick moment to tell you Layla's story. Layla came to me as a senior last year and told me she had an interest in going into the toxicology field. This is not a field that I am very familiar with. So when we sat down to talk about what her ideal workplace would be like, she really didn't know. We had reached out to a couple of local law enforcement agencies and there just wasn't anything there for her in terms of toxicology. So we decided the next best thing was to get her in a lab to figure out what she really liked doing in that lab. So luckily, Liz made a connection with an HR person at Gavaudan, which is located in East Hanover. They are one of the world's leading manufacturers of flavors and fragrances, and they have a huge lab on site. So we were able to post that opportunity for our students. We had seven or eight kids apply to this internship who were all called in for an in-person interview. Layla was so impressive that she got the internship and when I visit, visited her there, she raved about her experiences in the lab. She was running different tests on enzymes. She was collecting data. She was analyzing that data. And she really felt like she was part of the team. She had an outstanding mentor who took her to lunch one day to talk about her career goals. And when Layla mentioned toxicology, her mentor said to her, Layla, you'll never believe this. Govaudan has an in-house toxicology department. They have to test all of the flavors and fragrances to make sure they are, are okay to send out um, to consumers. So the next day, Layla was set up uh, with a meeting with the VP of toxicology. She was able to talk about her future career goals. She was able to bounce ideas back and forth. And that director of toxicology offered her a summer internship in their toxicology department 
after this internship ended. So the last time I talked to Layla was before she was leaving for school, and her comment to me was, I am so excited. I am more prepared than anybody else that's going to be walking into school this year. So couldn't be more happy for Layla. Um, and then one student that I wanted to highlight for you uh, is a student that I had in my co-op class. Um, co-op is our program where the student comes to school for half of the day and then leaves to go to a part-time job for the other half. Um, and part of the curriculum of that class is to do career research because many of them are not necessarily college bound. Um, they might be looking at tech schools or apprenticeships or things like that. And Joe uh, used to get a little frustrated doing his, college, uh, his career research because he really just had no idea what he wanted to do. And the, the skill surveys would spit out these jobs and he'd be like, no, I don't want to do this. This is not for me. Um, and we were lucky enough, Chrissy actually, um, I think this was a cold call, probably something you saw on Instagram or social media, 3D Pets, um, an amazing company right in Booton that makes prosthetic devices for animals. Um, we set up, Chrissy set up a meeting. We met with Alex, the owner, and his team. And Alex uh, was a self-proclaimed very average, did he even say below average high school student, um, had no idea what he wanted to do in high school, wound up going to CCM um, to take, and he took a product design course and he fell in love with the process. Um, he became an engineer and is now an entrepreneur. He owns three businesses, one of which is the 3D pet uh, prosthetic devices and um, so we were happy to post this internship and had maybe 10 students apply for this internship. Some very, very impressive students with AP this and GPAs uh, through the roof. Joe interviewed and got this position. Um, when I went to see him, uh, when I tell you the smile was ear to ear, he was loving what he was doing. He was working with his hands. Um, they, he was 3D printing and doing all of these amazing um, things as you could see. Um, up there and they actually went on to offer him a paid summer job at 3D Pets and he just reached out to me a couple of days ago. Um, he's still working there and he's taking courses at CCM for product design. So he's pursuing exactly what this other young man, um, kind of his mentor was. So, you know, this obviously had a huge impact on Joe's life and, you know, I'm just so proud. <laughs> Uh, so I think that wraps it up for us. Thank you so much for your support of our program. We're just, we're, we're so excited about it. We could really talk about it all night. Um, and we're hoping that someday, I know, uh, we'll have to shut up now, but we're hoping someday <laughs> it'll be an opportunity for all of our seniors and not just, you know, a small um, percentage of them, but a, a part of their senior experience here in Persephone.